In today's video, we're checking out the number one ranked tactic for Football Manager 2022. It wins a quadruple with Man City, a double with Inter Milan, and gets Cambridge United back-to-back -back promotions. This one is ridiculous, and today, I'm going to show you how to build it. Welcome back to FM Base. My name is Charlie, and today is a very special day because this video is sponsored by my FM Journal from FM Base. That's right, guys. This is a brand new product from us here at FM Base, and it is a journal where you can plan and record all of your progress for your Football Manager 2022 saves. The journals are available to pre-order right now, so make sure you get in quick because there is only 500 copies available. And make sure you use my special link down in the description and use code Charlie underscore boy at checkout for 5% off. This is the first actual product bought out by FM Base, and I'm very excited to get my hands on it. I'm sure you are too, so click that link down below and get yours. So here we are on the FM Base Tactic Tester, and today we are looking at the new number one ranked tactic from Stephen HK, the 4123v2. This is the brand new number one ranked tactic, knocking off this tactic from Scorch. This tactic has a ridiculous 63.13% win percentage overall, with a 75% sub top percentage win percentage, that is, and a 51.25 underdog win percentage. It won 101 matches in the test, scoring. 431 goals. Uh, that's 2.69 goals per game. Nice. Uh, conceded 234, which is 1.47 goals per game. This tactic was created by Stephen HK, but was not uploaded by him. So we don't have a lot of information on what the tactic's about here. But here is the tactic in game, and it is a pretty simple 4-3-3 tactic. This is actually my favorite formation to use in this year's game. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you prefer to use. And while you're down there, hit the like button and press that subscribe if you're enjoying the content. But this is a very easy tactic to build, but if you are able to download it, of course I'll have the link to download it down below. But if not, feel free to follow along here and I'll show you how to build it. So we're going to start off by looking at the player roles and individual instructions. We'll start off with our pressing forward on attack, who is also asked to take fewer risks, dribble more, and shoot more often. We then got both of our wingers who have the same instructions, both on attack as well. They're both asked to shoot less often and mark tighter. We then have our two Metzalas on attack. The one on the left is asked to cross less often, dribble more, shoot less often and mark tighter, with the run on the right being asked to dribble more, shoot less often and mark tighter. We then got our defensive midfielder on support, asked to dribble more, shoot less often, get further forward, tackle harder and mark tighter. Both of our inverted wingbacks are on support and they both have the same instructions, which are to take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, get further forward and mark tighter. We then have our ball playing defenders. Both of them are on defend and both asked to dribble more. And then finally, we got our sweeper keeper on support who is asked to tackle harder. So in terms of team instructions mentality, we are on positive. In possession, we're attacking fairly wide. We got overlaps on the left and the right with play out of defense. Shorter passing with a higher tempo. Uh, low crosses with work ball into the box and run at defense is also selected. In transition, we're counter pressing and countering as well as distributing to the fullbacks and throwing it long. And then out of possession, we got the offside trap on with a much higher line of engagement with a standard defensive line. Uh, we're also pressing much more often and also preventing short goalkeeper distribution. So that is how you build the tactic. And with all of these tactic videos, I like to do a little bit of a tactic test. So I've taken four teams at different levels to see their effectiveness using this tactic over a season long simulation. Of course, this is just a plug and play test. So there has been no signings made for any of these teams, no training, no team talks, anything like that. Just a full plug and play to see how this tactic goes. Let's jump over and have a look at the results. So for the teams, I've had a look at two teams in Italy, them being Inter Milan and Sampdoria. Then also a couple teams in England. We're looking at Manchester City and also Cambridge United down in League One. We're going to start things off in Italy with Sampdoria and Inter Milan. We'll have a look at Sampdoria first because they actually smashed it out of the park using this tactic, finishing in fourth position in the table, getting themselves Champions League football for the second season. Milan also going very well with this tactic tactic finishing in that top spot on 102 points centurions with this tactic for inter milan um their their closest rival that you would think uh juventus finishing down in seventh position so you can see inter milan smashing out of the park sampdoria smashing out of the park 
let's have a closer look. So Sampdoria were predicted to finish down in ninth position. You can see they obviously outshone that finishing the season in fourth position. If we have a quick look at their other competitions, they were only in the Italian Cup and they were knocked out relatively early by AC Milan, a bit unfortunately. They were actually second in the league for a lot of the season if we have a look at their league positions uh, throughout the season, but then dropped down to fourth place at the back end of the season. But if we look at their players as a whole, Antonio Candreva at 35 years of age had their highest average rating with a 7.25 throughout the season. Julian Chabot, uh, the 24-year-old centre-back, had a 7.20 average rating as well, which is very, very good average rating from those two. In terms of goals, you can see the 39-year-old Fabio Cagliarella uh, scoring 21 goals in 39 appearances, also getting three assists. And then Morton Thornsby, uh, the midfielder, uh, who was 26 years of age, getting 12 goals and four assists this season. Uh, Assist-wise, Adrian Silva, uh, Dams, Guard, and Kendreva topped the assist markers. 13 for uh, Adrian Silva throughout the season, which is pretty decent stats to see. Um, so far, so good for Sampdoria. If we have a look at the data hub quickly, we'll just have a quick skim over things here. You can see that general performance graph. They were well above the league average in goals per game and expected goals per game. They can see they're just over the league average in uh, expected goals for the season conceded. Uh, but shots, they were over the top on uh, shots on target percentage. They had 47.3%, which is above the league average. Pass completion was just around the league average and the same with tackles. One was just around around the league average. If we look at defending uh, for them for this season, their tackles attempted was actually quite a bit lower, maybe because they were dominating games, didn't have to attempt as many tackles as their op opposition. Same with clearances, everything else there looking pretty decent. If we have a look at one of their recent pass maps, this is very, very interesting to see. You can see this little triangle of the defensive midfielder and the two ball playing defenders playing throughout each other. And then we've got our inverted wing backs, our uh, Mazzalas on attack, and also our wingers. All these three little triangles on the wing getting balls in it to our striker up top. Very interesting to see. This is a very, very intriguing looking pass map. And it seemed like getting balls, uh, spraying balls out of the wings and getting their goals that way seemed to be the way forward for the Sampdoria side. Now, if we jump over to Inter Milan, of course, a fantastic season, only losing two games and only drawing three games in the whole season, finishing the season on 102 points with 107 goal difference. In other competitions, they were knocked out in the semi-final of the Italian Cup by Juventus, but they did win the Italian Super Cup, also fell short in the Champions League to Villarreal. In terms of their play stats, though, I'm expecting to see some very, very good stats from this side. And we can also already see one there. Latoro Martinez getting 51 goals in 47 appearances throughout the season, also six assists for him as well. Next up was Atoro Vidal with 16 goals. Perisic got 15. 14 for Barella. 13 for Edin Dzeko. A lot of them would have been off the bench. He would have played a second fiddle in that striker role. Um, in terms of assists, we're seeing Barella with the highest for 22. Uh, Hakan Chananoglu with 19. And Joaquin Correa with 14 as well. So some very, very good stats from this Inter Milan side. Um, I'm guessing they just didn't concede very many goals. Which, yes, this graph shows us exactly that. They can conceded less than half a goal a game. So they conceded a goal every two games, which is 0.92 fewer than the Serie A average. They also scored 3.26 goals a game. They absolutely smashed it with this tactic. Scoring 3.26 goals a game, conceding 0.45 goals a game. Surely they ran away with every game and won every game very, very successfully. We'll have a look at their defending graph, which is very interesting for them because this just proves they barely defended. They barely had their attempt tackles. They barely had to blocks because they were always attacking so much. And they barely did any clearances as well. If we look at their pass maps, we'll probably see a similar story to... Um, the Sampdoria one. It's a relatively similar, similar story. Maybe a better looking pass map in this game. It worked probably what, this is probably what the tactic creator was expecting the pass map to look. We've got this triangle here. We've got this triangle here. We've got this triangle here. All feeding balls into our striker. That is a absolutely beautiful pass map. So that's Italy done. A very, very successful season for the two Italian sides. Now in England, we're going to start off with Manchester City in the Premier League, winning the league title by 10 points. Leeds 
leads away in second. What the hell on 85 points, 10 points behind in second place. Uh, we can see here not very many Manchester City people topping the goals for the season. But in other competitions, I did say in the top of the video, they did win a quadruple and they did just that. They nearly won five trophies. They won the Premier League, they were first all season, won the FA Cup, won the Community Shield and they won the Champions League. Five nil in the final to Villarreal. What, is, what a weird season. Villarreal in the Champions League final. Leeds coming second in the Premier League. A wild, wild season. They lost the final of the Carabao Cup to Arsenal, unfortunately. But they did win every other competition that they were in. Not as crazy goal stats for this Man City side. But Kevin De Bruyne are getting the most goals for them. With 30 goals throughout the season. Uh, 22 for Ferran Torres. 21 for Gabby Jesus. And 20 for Raheem Sterling. Assists-wise, Jack Rillis with 29 assists. 21 for De Bruyne. 15 for the Bernardo Silva and Mares with 12. One thing that's always really interesting with using Man City for these tactic tests is they don't really have a decent striker. So they do always struggle with goals. But this is the first time that they've really, really overperformed. Um, well, performed to their standard with a tactic, even without having a decent striker at the helm. If we look at their general performance graph, it is similar to the Inter one, but not as psycho amazing. They scored nearly three goals per game, conceding less than a goal per game, which is very, which is half a goal are fewer than the Premier League average. So they absolutely smashed that out of the park as well. And their defensive graph will look very, very similar to the Inter one because they barely had to attempt tackles, clearances, or blocks per game. And I'm going to assume that their pass map was basically identical if we can get that up there. Oh, it's a little bit different actually. Uh, we can see the striker not getting fed at balls as much as we'd expect. Uh, De Bruyne probably played one of these Metzala roles. He seemed to play the right one in the most recent game in the Champions League final. But yeah, very interesting. Man City not playing a lot of passes to their striker that's only fairly frequent, I believe that is. And that is Nathan Ake playing balls forward to Gabby Jesus. Very, very interesting pass map for Manchester City. And the final side we're going to look at is going to be another team who got over 100 points using this tactic, and that was Cambridge United down in League One. They were newly promoted, predicted to finish down near the relegation zone in 21st, but they absolutely smashed it out of the park. Only eight draws and seven losses in the whole season finishing the season on 101 points above Sunderland in second, who also got promoted this season. They got knocked out relatively early in every single other competition, not too surprising, but they were actually up and around the first position all year, but then just the second half of the season absolutely smashed it, stayed up at that position of the table. In terms of their squad, we have got Sam Smith scoring 22 of their goals this season, Shiloh Tracy with 17, Wes Houlihan, that's a name blast from the past, at 40 years of age, getting 13 goals, 17 assists. This tactic makes Wes Houlihan a legend. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, Assist-wise, Houlihan was the top. Uh, Jack Lancaster with 15. Jansen Weir with 12. And Shiloh Tracy with 10. A very, very good season. The highest average rating was Wes Houlihan. What a donny at 40 years young. What a player he is. In terms of their data hub, it is looking very, very similar to the Manchester City one. Scoring at slightly less goals per game, but still scoring 2.37 goals per game. Conceding less than a goal per game obviously averages out that they win most of their games in the season. And another very similar one to Inter and also Man City, where they didn't have to make as many tackles, didn't have to make as many clearances, and didn't have to make as many blocks per game. So the question is, how did this tactic get on? What do we think the results of the test are? And I've got to say, this is probably the most dominant tactic test results I've ever seen. Every team outshining what they're expected to do by quite a bit into smashing the Italian leagues. Uh, Sampdoria getting to Champions League places, Cambridge United getting back-to-back -back promotions, and Manchester City winning the quadruple, winning the Champions League, which is something that they just can't do in real life, but they can do in Football Manager. This one is one to definitely try out and make sure you do by following that link down below. Also, feel free to grab yourself one of those FM journals that I shouted out at the beginning of this video. Get 5% off with my code. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe down below as well while you're there in the comments pressing all those other links. And also feel free to check out this video where I uh, had another tactic that won a quadruple. It is a 4 one 2 one tactic. 4 one 2 one 2 tactic that won a quadruple in Football Manager. It's a good one. I'm stumbling over my words. It's so hot in this room. Oh my god. Okay. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you a lot in the next FM-based video very, very soon. Bye-bye.